Hi, welcome back to my 2023 Knits video. Um, as you've probably realized, I had to cut um, the last video short since uh, I had been filming for over two hours. I decided to uh, create two parts of this What I Knit in 2023 video um, since I thought it would be easier to upload. I have pretty um, weak internet connection here where we live. Unfortunately, we don't get better uh, Wi-Fi. And so it would have just taken ages to upload. And now I'm giving you all the information that I have collected. I didn't want to cut it short somewhere throughout the video. So let's talk about um, the second half of 2023 and what I have learned from it. August rolls around and we have our first t-shirt of the summer. These last t-shirts were all more so spring makes but then I made this I actually made this on my road trip uh, in the Pacific Northwest this is the Anchors summer shirt by Petite Knit and I surprisingly like it this is uh, Santa's Gun Line in the colorway um, it was like one of the first maybe it's also putty I'm not sure which is nice because I can then wear it wash it in the washing machine which is obviously more so um yeah it needs to happen with like summer knits i wore this quite a fair few times i could see myself also putting it underneath like a v-neck this is something chelsea has done before and i found it to be a, a great look um i enjoyed knitting this like i said i knitted it on our um on our road trip it was a mindless knit my first like round yo construction with this like beautiful anchors tea um, application obviously i did the bonnet the anchors bonnet so i knew the technique already um lots of people that i know have made this as well and have found it to be a great staple and i was actually pretty surprised by how how much i liked it on my body as i had said that i didn't think a round yoke would be uh, something that I would enjoy. So yeah, I'm not sure if I have anything else to say about this. It's the Anchor Summer Tea, no, Summer Shirt. It's on the bigger gauge. I think she has the Summer Tea, which is more of a, on a smaller needle, um, maybe fingering. This was DK with the Lena being a bit thicker and more like lofty. I like it. It's a nice t-shirt. My next make was a little mini cow. We actually cast on together while I was in the Pacific Northwest. Um, Chelsea and I, this was our Aragorn <laughs> terrazzo neck mini cow, uh, or micro cow as we had coined it. Um, and yeah, it's uh, a neck construction. It's again by Petite Knit. I wish this was a bit wider on my shoulders. I think I have quite broad and like round shoulders so this I think I've made the smaller size which I should have probably gone up with the, the bigger size but I was um, keen on having my yarn last in the end I had loads left over so I could have gone up but I didn't so the fit isn't perfect so if I'm just wearing this on its own it looks a bit too narrow I think but if I'm wearing it like underneath a jacket no one can see so that's nice um this was like I said, made in the Aragorn colorway by um, Long Dark Yarn and in a Shibui like cloud, uh, like a mohair. They, uh, I think, have stopped producing this. So this was on sale and uh, Chelsea and I had split the cost for the yarn that she got. Um, this was a like very spontaneous thing that we did. Something else that I wanted to note about this. Oh, yeah. I remembered. At first I did the pattern as it was intended and did like the tubular um, rows before the Italian bind off and I had to rip that again because I wasn't able to get this over my head. Be mindful of that if you're making this pattern. Um, maybe my head is bigger than petite knits which um, is possible obviously but um, I just didn't care for it so I ripped back the tubular bind off and just did the Italian Italian bind off. In general I have uh, found that I enjoy doing that for petite knits patterns. Um, 
I mean, sometimes they obviously really like look really nice, the Chebula bind off, but in general, I um, like to just do an Italian bind off for most of my products. Um, I've actually worn this a fair few times. In the beginning, I wasn't sure if this was going to be a very practical knit or more so like a fun, like, like I said, micro cowl with a friend. Uh, but I've actually worn this quite a fair, like quite a couple of times just to have like a very warm neck and um, chest and back area if I wasn't wearing my thick like puffer jacket um, in the winter but more so like my um, like my wax waxed jacket the barber um, jacket um, or like a rain jacket or any any uh, not as thick jacket this was still keeping me quite warm which was nice and then just putting on a hat or something so I use this uh, as a shawl like instead of a shawl or I even put like a shawl over it as well um, so yeah this was my last August make moving on to September now um, I made the corn cardigan or better so I finished the corn cardigan I had knitted on this for a couple of months months I'm sure which is a, a theme for this month I finished two things that I think I had on my needles since May and I made this in I made this in the wool dreamer mota which is a quite a rustic uh, wool um, but not too rustic I can pr very much tolerate it on my skin it's in a beautiful red color and the buttons are by Petite Knit. Um, I made a mistake in the in how I spaced the buttons um, because I didn't uh, count from like the when I was measuring. I didn't measure from the top or like add add that to it because I, I then after the fact um, added like this band. So I just uh, measured from here for the first button hole. And that's why these two buttonholes are so close to one another, which I don't mind. Most of the time I wouldn't have like wouldn't button up all of them. So you don't really see. And like I said, I don't think it matters. I made this too small. To be quite honest, this was another, I, w I don't want to say disappointing because it, it was interesting to do. It was fun to learn a new technique. This was my first lace project. Um, but yeah i have not worn it uh loads of times i've worn it a couple of times it was nice to wear over a dress but then again i'm not i don't wear dresses that often um and i even like looking at it and like comparing it to some bigger sweaters that i like to wear it looks more like a a, a big kid's cardigan in my opinion i'm not sure if it's the gauge Again, I find it quite difficult to uh, catch like the correct gauge in a in a textured or lace or ribbed pattern and like realize if if the gauge's correct. Um, I am pretty sure that this only gave me about one or two centimeters of positive ease, so it was just my fault I didn't pick the right pattern size. I've realized and found this over the uh, last year that. Different designers have different uh, ways in which they grade their patterns and different first sizes and last sizes and just like different size range. And whereas I'm pretty much all of the time going to be happy with the fit that size four is going to give me with most other pattern designers. Whoops. Um, with Rebecca Close pattern, I've just found that size five gives me more positive ease that I more so enjoy. This is just very uh, size like fitting to my body, which I don't enjoy as much um, the look of that. So I'm thinking about rehoming this. If any of the things that I am being like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to keep this uh, speak to you, you can always send me a message on Instagram or uh, Ravelry. And I'm still thinking about it, but I'd be, um, I think I'd be okay with letting go of this and maybe one or two other projects 
if they were going to a better home in a way to maybe a person that is a bit smaller or more petite than I am and then for them to or if they're the same size as I am and just like the the look of the like more fitted um look but yeah uh, I didn't think I made any bigger uh modifications with this um I'm sorry I'm always picking like hair or like pilling off of my knits it's just yeah it's too I don't know it's a habit um but yeah um I love how it's looking I just don't love it on me or in my wardrobe it doesn't really have a huge place like it there's just many more other things that I would gravitate to more so so I'm thinking about either giving it to someone in my life that would want it or um, maybe rehoming it so another person who enjoys the look of it would be able to wear it so if you like the look of it uh, and you would maybe like to have it maybe send me an Instagram message or something like that um, so the next pattern is the Marco Polo this was another test knit and this was maybe my magnum opus of the year it looks like this this was made um, on 2.5 millimeter needles and it took me may june july august five months to make this was a test knit for the Crea Dia Studio, who I I love their work. I love what she's doing. I like the details in this project, but I have not worn this. And it saddens me to say it because like I said, it took almost half a year and it took so many hours of knitting. I had this started actually my journey of having some issues with pain due to knitting and like I'm just uh, stre stretching my hands now. Um, yeah, this was a really, really difficult thing to do and finish and make. And it taught me so many things like double knitting I can do now like in my dream. <laughs> like um, this was two millimeter double knitting it has the most beautiful like split hem. It was actually the first split hem I did. I thought this would have been my first split hem, but this was. Um, but in the end, something that I knew from the beginning, but ignored came true, that I am not a polo neck person. And this is really difficult to realize because like I said, I'd spent months and months on it. The yarn was pretty expensive as well. I tried the Unling yarn, the everyday kit. I got a slight discount on it because it was a test knit, but like 10% or something. Um, shipping was quite expensive as well. So in the end, this was a, an expensive uh, project that took a long time and it looks great. Like on, on a hanger, it has great detail. I love uh, Nabita's designs a lot, but it's just very unfortunate that it's not something that I want to wear. And that's why I also would be, I would rehome this if anyone would be interested in it, even though it would be difficult to like part ways with it just because it was such a difficult uh, process and just because it took such a long time to make. But I don't see a point in holding on to things that don't make me happy or people that are people things that actually pull me down like looking at it and knowing that I'm not wearing it is my making me feel worse than like maybe giving it like giving it another chance with someone else's wardrobe so um I did crop it to the original pattern a bit so if anyone's like interested in it I think I should have all the measurements on my Ravelry page but I'd be happy to send them out to a person that's interested in it as well uh, the yarn actually obviously has held up uh, perfectly since I haven't worn it, but I also think it would, if I would wear to wear it, it's like a linen, um, cotton, wool, 
lamb's wool mix I think uh, so it's a fantastic uh, um, materials in there so yeah if anyone's interested in that I'm really not sure what to to think of it but I think letting it go would be a better option and yeah I might see if in my family or my friend group anyone is interested interested in it before obviously but yeah uh, so far no one has <laughs> raised uh, any like shared any interest with me so we'll see uh, my last finished object for September I just um, had to open them up because I, I sometimes just like stuck my socks into one another and so they don't lose their <laughs> sister or brother but now they they look a bit creased but yeah let me show you my striped Bellini socks they're just vanilla socks And they are pretty like creased I'm sorry um, I've made these with a sock set from beehive yarns I think it's called I got it at yak at uh, a yarn shop in Brighton uh, actually one of my favorite stores I went to on my journey to uh, the UK in the summer I went to Brighton and um, London and in London I went to loop London to uh, my favorite my, my favorite no my ivory room and then I didn't go to a lot of other London shops that I would love to go to in the future but I loved those two that I went to um, and yeah they're just basic vanilla socks with some striping they were a three color like mini sock set and I had put the other ones in my blanket because yeah I couldn't put all of them in this sock or I didn't want to I like them they're not my favorite they're a bit out of my um color comfort zone but I like I like that about them um but yeah they're they're just not my favorite socks in the world but that's okay I made these the next thing that I had finished in October actually was my stick season sweater by the Crea Bea So this is the Stick Season Sweater by Rebecca Klo. I've made this in Explorer Knits and Fibers, Rocky's Decay in the colorway Daybreak. And I got this at Flock Fiber Festival. Uh, this was a test knit for Rebecca and I really love all the details of this sweater. Especially like these seaming details, which are created by knitting not by seaming um i like the thick two by two collar although i have knitted this shorter than she has um suggested in the pattern this is still i think a pretty high um crew neck uh, and i think i've made it about um one or two centimeters shorter so because it is folded in i made it i think i made it like two centimeters shorter which overall makes it like a centimeter shorter in like height because it's folded you know um, with the yarn I have stated before that the Rocky's DK because it's a superwash merino base is not my favorite base in the world uh, just because I feel like it's a bit like squeaky like people have described superwash yarn to be like that and uh, for me like I said this was a year of testing out of trying new things of learning more stuff um, this actually works as a warmer day um, sweater well like a maybe fall or spring sweater more so than like a very cold day winter sweater where I would like to wear something like this hollow v-neck that has like maybe two strands maybe a mohair a surrey a more thicker wool that is not a super wash just of the way in which it behaves I've made this in size 5, even though I had started out making size 4, I had realized or remembered, thankfully, that, like I said, size 4 doesn't really suit me as well as size 5, I think. I like the more, like, oversized look. So I went back and made this bigger. I'm actually intending to make another stick season this um, first quarter of the year for my boyfriend. 
because um, I've gotten some yarn from Woolly Knit in a cone, like a, a lovely dark green. And I think it would look lovely, the two of us, next Christmas wearing the same sweater. And I'm also gonna knit size five for him. Uh, he tried this on actually, and just uh, without it being cropped, it really suits him well. Like, I mean, I'm gonna knit it for him in the, si in the same size, but not make it as cropped as mine, but make it long enough for him. The next test that I did was for Coley Nielsen from Paisley Knits, um, and I made this Kalini blouse. Um, it, I made it in the Flock colorway by Wilbury Fiber Co. Um, unfortunately, when we went to Flock at the uh, the second day, uh, we didn't go on Friday and on and on Saturday the yarn was already gone uh, for this colorway, except for a base that I didn't want to get. I got this on the fingering merino superwash uh, in I think it's cozy sock. Um, and I just like the way in which the colors popped on the superwash colors more, uh, especially the darker tones, like the blood red, just looked nicer in my opinion on these bases, whereas on the uh, non-superwash bases, they just, yeah, didn't look as, as dark. And I held this with a cone of Surrey, like silk Surrey, from woolly yarn i think it was called i i got it online a couple of um like sometime last year or the year before it's like an italian brand i think and it was called crystal gray or something and i really like this um this has held up perfectly it hasn't pulled a bit i've been wearing it quite a lot actually i wanted to say that to um the rocky's dk as well i think it pills quite a bit i'm not sure if you are able to see um, obviously I'm, I'm like depilling it all the time. So it's not that I don't take care of it. It's just loads more, um, how would you say? Like, um, it's higher maintenance. And I did like a regular bind off, uh, for this because it was a two by two rib. Um, and I, I couldn't be bothered to learn how to two by two tribula bind off, which I learned for this sweater. And I love the look of the rearranging your stitches before doing a tribula bind off. And I've learned that from Andrea Maury's tutorial here on YouTube. So I'm not mad about having a regular bind off on this, but just to make sure uh, I said it again, the yarn pills a lot more than other yarns, which maybe should have, I could have um, counteracted by holding another lace strand with it, which would have helped with gauge and um, pilling because also the Rocky's DK is more of like a sport to DK weight. Um, and this would have, I think, looked better in like a DK to iron weight or like a true DK weight. And so, um, yeah, that's just something to keep in mind, which makes these two sweaters that I finished in, let me take a peek again, uh, yeah, in October, mm, made them both more so um, fit like a warmer season as well. I knitted this mostly or a lot of this project on my trip to Copenhagen and this is another one where the learning of knit your sleeves and your body long enough uh, kept in like kept reminding me. I don't have like a regular problem of always making everything too small but with these like test knits that have like a concrete deadline, I made both of these sleeves too short. I should have made them longer. I played a game of yarn chicken with the stick season. Um, so that's why I maybe also tended to make them a bit shorter. But with this, um, I mean, you, you never know how much they will block out. Uh, with this, I, I've actually intended to make them shorter than the pattern suggested because I had heard that they blocked out more also because the v-neck is so wide and so with this now it's perfect with this it's a bit too short but that's okay because like i said i mostly wear it over other shirts again like the harlow v-neck and then the, the shirts just poke out a bit which is also nice and like i said it is more so a warmer day knit when it comes to like 
I don't know, like 10, 15 degrees, not so much like 20 to 30, but like springtime. Um, whereas if it's like a minus two or like minus five or five degree day, I would want to wear something more warm. I love the colorway of this. It's maybe one of my favorite knits I've ever made when it comes to texture and colorway. Unfortunately, <laughs> or maybe it's, it's okay because I like to like use my first skein for the yoke and then use one for the rest of the body and then use one for the sleeves and like be really um, like resourceful full like that with my the yarn that I have. But that isn't the best way to get like the most consistent uh like speckling i know that um this like last skein you can see i use for the body has loads more speckling than the um the first two did but i actually took a couple of strands and did some duplicate stitching just like on the front to counteract that a bit I'm not sure if you can see, but now I'm pretty happy with it. It doesn't really bother me. It's more so like a little gradient. It gets darker towards the like bottom and I'm okay with that. I actually had to redo the I-cord bind off a couple of times. This was my first I-cord bind off project really, I think. I had done applied I, 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 I had done applied I-cords quite a couple of times, but yeah. This was like the first one where I did like an eye cord bind off and I'm pretty sure I had to go up a couple of like a, a needle size and then do it really loosely to get it right. Like I said, redo it twice, but that's okay. I learned loads from it. My next two uh, knits were Sunday socks and they were gifts. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned the other Sunday sock that I had made in August. I'm pretty sure I forgot it. So I made three pairs of Sunday socks through uh, between August and October for Christmas and my boyfriend's birthday. So I made one for my mother-in-law um, and I made one for my aunt and I made one for Hannah's and I made all of them in perfect. Um, I actually have one of them with me because Hannah's and I live together so I can always uh, get to his finished objects. This is actually his Sunday sock. I made him these like dark gray ones and I made my aunt um, a light green, like a sagey one, and my mother-in-law this like light gray one. I can insert some pictures. Um, these have actually like kind of like pills more than the merino, um, like superwash merino DK sock set from Olivia and Oliver. I think that has held up better considering it has he has had it for longer this obviously is less expensive like a um, sun is going perfect two skeins is if you get an on like offer maybe around like 10 to 12 euros whereas a sock set can get up to like 30 euros um so i think both have like a place uh somehow um in my making um life i guess but yeah, I've heard someone on the live stream uh, with Vanessa actually say that the Perfect has um, kind of pilled for them quite a lot of like get some fuzzies and I would agree with that. Like I had to depill it before uh, filming now and it still has some pills on it. I don't think it's a bad idea, like a bad thing. He still loves to wear his hand knit socks and I will for sure make him some more in 2024. But yeah, just to have mentioned it. And now moving on to the last October make, which was Hannah's sweater that I had gifted him the yarn for at the um, at Christmas on 2022. And it's the Northland sweater by Petit Knit. It's in Drops, Alaska, in like a mm, mottled gray color. It suits him really well. I love seeing it on him. It's a tiny bit short. I had blocked it quite a bit, but 
ideally it would be like three centimeters longer roundabout which is nice so i can always um refer back to this make when i'm knitting him him his next sweater um i think it suits him really well it's more of like an iron weight so um his next knit being a dk uh will be uh, a bit lighter i was really proud to have made this for him as a first sweater i had intended to make him a different one which was more difficult in the stitch pattern and then i was like if i'm going to make as big of a cardigan as or like a sweater as i am making for him i want it to be mindless and i mostly knit on it while like the body i was knitting or sleeves not sure i was uh, knitting while we were re-watching the whole uh, lord of the rings trilogy um and the hobbit movies and everything which was um really nice because like that is something that connects us both and where he was reading the silmarillion to me and i was knitting on a sweater for him which was which just um, special memories from this last year and i have put in again as i really like to do i've put in a little tag for him and he was really appreciative and really showed me that it was really worth making it for him which i am very grateful for that he appreciates stuff like that my stomach is growling but i'm going to continue sh sharing everything that i have made and then maybe taking a break before going into what i've learned from all of these project projects november makes were pretty creative i think I've made this beautiful swatch bag by Maria Skabeglade, I think her name is. And it's looking a little bit something like this. It has a drawstring uh, attachment that I have knitted and then put in some cotton strings. Um, it has uh, my label again. I've knitted, no, I've sewn the inside as well which, uh, yeah, it's not the neatest job, but it's, I've, I've made it, which I'm so proud of. Let me just maybe turn it inside out so you can see. Yeah, so that was my swatch bag. Obviously all of these swatches I've made in the last three and a half years. Some of them I've made, some of them the plants have changed, some of these never came to fruition and I think that's funny uh, looking at this and seeing how many projects I've actually made from it and which I didn't. So I really love this. This is a special project bag. I don't use every time I do um, a project but I think it, it's gonna hold my next sweater project that I'm gonna cast on very soon. Yes. The next thing that I made was my last test of the year and it was, uh, I think my, maybe my, one of my two favorite tests. And it was the Stella quilt cushion. This is by Lover Penrose. She asked me to test this for her as she probably heard me talk about her uh um what's it called again her sweet shop blanket and then her um cushion plans and rave about them and how much i love the blanket and blah 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 how excited i was about it and she was so kind and asked if i wanted to test for her i used the same yarn that i'm using for my blanket uh, so they might fit it's the double sunday in the colorway marzipan and then some uh, the colors I have talked about this in my latest like episode where this was a finished object so you might want to go back and um, hear me talk about these colors they are mostly hand dyed and it's a mixture of like Olivia and Oliver Explore Knits and Fibers and Knitting for Olive which is obviously not hand dyed but yeah that's the gist of it I love it if anyone's coming over I'm being like can you please not sit on that like that is for looking at <laughs> no but i i lean against it like with my back if i'm sitting and spinning for example but i'm not sitting on it and i'm like not putting my face on it and yeah i'm being really precious with it i have 
sewn uh, in all ends so this would be not as easy to like <clears throat> so this wouldn't be as easy to like just take off and wash mm, but I if I were to like if there were ever to if there was ever to be uh, like a stain on it I could try and find the the end where I um, sewn in the end and just try to reopen the like mattress stitch and uh, put it in the sink and do like a little hand wash situation but yeah for now it's good like that and I don't intend on opening it anytime soon. The next project was a self-drafted cowl which I gifted to Hannes for his birthday as well. So this and the Sunday socks were a gift for his birthday. This is actually double folded. I've made this in Arbor by Brooklyn Tweed in this like beautiful dark brown color and he can wear it like this. He hasn't worn it a ton since it doesn't get as cold. He's not a scarf person. He just wears this like fisherman's hat that I made for him in 2022, I think. Um, but he's worn it a couple of times, at least for me to take pictures of him. So it wasn't a big, big project or a deal. Um, I'm not gonna make him wear something if he doesn't think that he needs it. Maybe he'll wear it on like some, hopefully we'll, we'll get them still some like snowy days. Uh, when we get like to go out uh, on a sleigh and like um, maybe go I don't know hiking or something in the snow um, so yeah he hasn't worn this a ton it's self-drafted I'm again speaking more about this in the episode where I've finished it um, I've taken inspiration from two uh, free uh, cowl patterns and then made made up my my own little recipe it's not that big of a deal it's on my Ravelry if you're interested in it. And then my last November uh, make was my mini crop puff sweater. I'm hoping that this has a focus. Um, it's by the Wandering Flock. Uh, loads of people have made this this year. I've actually made a similar one last year as a promise keeper for Hannes and you can see that the one I've made this year is a lot smaller and it has better shaping <laughs> like this looks like something I would actually be wearing whereas this looks a bit clunky but that's okay uh, and it's not in the same color than his gray sweater like this was the promise keeper for the gray sweater and this is a promise keeper for the green sweater which I think is nice that it like has the same colors ah, and yeah I'm, I'm kicking myself a bit that I didn't realize it before I just used some leftover yarn for that from one of my I think it was must have been my my second sweater I made like the Marseille sweater the blue stripes this was that but yeah it's like we'll remember it forever because it's like living on our on our tree and it started a uh, tradition maybe I'm not sure if I'm if I'm doing it again next year it's a tradition for sure like giving a um, a promise keeper and gifting him the finished sweater within the next 11 months so mini crop puff made in um, the merino four ply by woolly knit the cone was gifted to me for a collaboration that I did with them and the mini crop puff I gave to Hannes. So last month, December, actually most finished objects of all the months, but a lot of tiny ones. So let's get going. My last finished cardigan, my third cardigan of 2023 was the Traveler's Cardigan. And I finished this in December. This was a mini cow with my friend Venetia from The Woolly Worker. And I made this in the Rain Cloud and Sage Unspun Yarn, 2109 Unspun it's called. We have this at the local yarn shop that I work at, uh, but it's discontinued. So we just have all of the leftover um, like uh, plates. Uh, it's just what we have. And then if it's sold out, it's sold out. 
but we're um, looking to collaborate with another maker that is um, like creating unspun yarn locally as well. So this was unspun with um, a high percentage of German and somewhat local yarn as well. And I held this double and used some, I think they're drops, like not nothing special um, buttons that I got on like a German yarn website like two years ago, maybe one and a half years ago, something like that. So this was my first unspun project, as I have mentioned, my first balloon sleeve project as well. I think so. Maybe my Lento can be like considered a balloon sleeve as well, but none of them have been as like grape as this. I have not managed to put in a label, which is um, not usual, like not typical for me. I love to put in my labels. I will do so. Um, I love how the back like a stitch pickup is really neat. I like my ribbing in this um, in this unspun actually. Although I did not do an Italian bind off, uh, this was quite split splitty the yarn. So um, a recommendation by Mia from Knitting Grace really helped me uh, by pre-winding the uh, unspun yarn, which I did and that really helped me with knitting the pro project. Um, but I just did a regular, um, a regular uh, bind off, uh, which I don't think looks too bad, uh, just because an Italian bind off wouldn't have been possible, at least for me at the time of making this. I I really like this. I really have been wearing this quite a lot. I like the really light but also warming aspects of it. It looks quite pilly already, but I think it's okay. It's like a rustic look. I'll see how it takes on like a a debobbler, how it how it reacts to that. Like if it's a yarn that I can easily debobble, deep bobble yeah the bobble deep pill um and yeah i'm really happy with this cardigan make i think it suits my body shape i've made like i think like zero modifications i'm not sure but i i don't think i've made any modifications and i really like the uh, way in which this is like cropped but not too cropped has like quite long sleeves balloony sleeves i just like it with just like a plain cotton long sleeve which I like to wear in uh, autumn when winter it's just really nice next December finished object was a hottie sweater my second hottie sweater you remember my first make of the year now this is one of my last and I gave it to my mom I'll insert a picture she was so happy to receive this she's such a hot water bottle person um, I think I, I got it from her the love for the hot water bottle and I've said that so many times, so I won't get into much more detail for this. It's the same yarn, alpaca boucle. You'll see in comparison to what it looks like when it's like brand new to what it looks like. First thing I showed you this, this video, it doesn't hold up the best, like the boucle. I got it all in one go. So I've had the yarn to make this bottle for my mom for the longest time already. So I just made it for her. She's going to be all right with the yarn. like changing a bit over time especially if you put in like hot hot water maybe that could contribute to like the yarn behaving differently as well but yeah i'm still happy with it and i'm happy i got it for her she was so happy with all of her presents and i can tap myself on the shoulder and be like yeah she got some pretty pretty awesome presents this this year most of them were handmade this year i've actually taught my mom and my mother-in-law how to knit again they both have had learned it when they were a child and but well, I hadn't done it for the longest time. And so my mother-in-law, she actually attempted her first sweater and she's nearly finished. She's just on the sleeves. And I was able to help her a bit. And my mom, she made a cowl and a hat for herself. Um, and some like, she she started with some little squares and then lost interest. And now she, she regained some interest. And so I gave her my first sewn project back, which she was so happy to get. And like, she could put in her little project at Christmas. It was so cute um but the next hottie sweater i made was for myself again because i have a small hot water bottle as well i love this just for like period cramps like if you have a smaller ache you might need a small hot water bottle <laughs> 
I've had this for some time and um, yeah, I'm just really happy to have made a little cover for it. This is actually the Gopard um, boucle, so it'll be interesting to see how this holds up in comparison to the alpaca boucle. Uh, first thing I gotta say, the difference, this one obviously has bigger loops in like the boucle and I didn't hold this double, whereas I did hold the alpaca drops boucle double, so yeah. I love this little guy, it's one of my favorite makes this year, although it has only been finished like halfway throughout December. But yeah, hottie sweater, again by Paula Strict, and by the one I had made for my mom, and this one I had figured out how to make this like double folded technique thing that she describes in the pattern, which, yeah, I'm really happy that I, I did it for this one. My next project were my Christmas socks. I had made some ripped six-ply socks in a yarn that I bought at my yarn shop, at my local yarn shop, Strickverliebt, and it's by Atelier Citron, the trekking six-ply, like, yeah, just six-ply sock, and it has a, like, a tweedy effect. I had knitted on them a bit through our Barcelona trip, which my boss and I went on, and I just thought, like, with a very muted, but still fun if you look closer at it like the primary colored speckles tweed speckles were really fun and so I wore them on Christmas and I, I really like them the next project I don't have with me uh, it's a croissant scrunchie uh, and it's by Lydia Rababa as well um, she actually gifted me one of these as her pattern it's a free pattern it's a scrunchie pattern um, and she gifted me one in my advent, which I was really happy to receive. And then I decided to make one for a secret Santa that we did. It was for my partner's brother's girlfriend. And I made it in her favorite color, which was fun because I used a color I don't usually use, which is light blue, like a baby blue. And I used a scrap that I had in stash. And she really liked it. And it, 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 fit, it fits her aesthetic so perfectly. So I'm, I'm happy about that. The next two things I finished were some ornaments for our tree. Again, I'm going to show them together just because they're so tiny. Um, this little acorn is the acorn account by, I have actually not written down this person and it was my first project I've made from her. So I'm going to write it down here. And then this is the tiny tree sock by um, Summer D Designs. This I've actually wanted to make for last year's, like two years ago, Christmas already, but I didn't get around to it. I used a beautiful green color. I think this was actually the green that was in my last, like the year before Christmas sock set from Olivia and Oliver Fibers. And the one in the middle was also from my friend um, Chelsea's stash. Um, like I said, she she told me that I could go through her stash for my scrappy blanket, and so I did. And with this, I actually used some, um, it's not British breeds, but it's like the Mary Wallen, like some stuff she would use for the Fair Isles knits. Is it like Johnson & Johnson or something? It's one of these like British breeds-esque little things that uh, my friend Marla actually gave to me and we did like a little craft night and I thought these colors fitted perfectly to a little acorn. So yeah, two more things for the tree. I'm actually gonna hang it up since we're gonna take down the tree pretty soon, but now they're, they're still gonna live on there till next year, like till we put them away to put them up again next year. Um, now I have finished three more things for my hat, which was crazy, but I went into these like finishing mode. I had so many like half done projects and I was like, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to finish this. Some of them I had on my needles for weeks, some of them for even a couple of months. And so I started to finish up my projects with this hipster hat again. 
a project which I really like from Petite Knit. Uh, this is in Exploring Knit Fibers, Rocky's DK Macross. Uh, beautiful, like mucky, green, mossy, like muddy green color. And I really like this. Like I said, I had um, shortened it a bit to how I knit the last one. I still quite like it. If I pull up the brim a bit higher, I can actually wear it like a wash cap hat style, which I'm not sure if that suits me better or like having a little um, a little pointy thing. Um, I don't love this hat because it is so like flimsy because the DK is not really a DK. It's more of like a sport weight and I'm not trying to throw shade, but it's just like, I'll have to remember for the future to hold a Rocky's DK with a lace weight or to maybe hold double or not to make something that I want more like structural integrity with. It's just like, if I compare it to my other hipster hat, although that's not like standing up on its own, it's much more, well, I mean, it doesn't really look much more floppy, non-floppy than that, but I can't explain to you that this is, it's just thicker. It doesn't like, I'm not sure. I still like it. I like the look of it. I like the color, obviously. It was bought at Flock Fiber Festival. Again, um, I don't enjoy knitting two by two ribbing like a whole lot, but I don't mind it as well. Um, it hasn't pilled or anything yet. I haven't worn it that much, to be quite honest. So I've just finished it a couple of weeks ago. But yeah, another hipster hat. Uh, I really like the pattern, but I think I have, like I have two now. I have enough now. First, I was really focused on the Stockholm hat. I made this like as my first, second and third hat and then my fourth and fifth as well. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna make that anytime soon again. I think I've got enough hats for now. I've got my eyes on like a really nice cabled hat. The Ret, I think it's called. Uh, my boss actually told me about it. And so I might attempt like a more difficult cabled hat this year and I also want to make a bobble hat like a, a pom-pom hat we'll see uh my last finished hat for this December is the Ola hat by Paula Strict again I think this must have been or must be my favorite hat I've made so far I love the color on me even though it's like more of a cool toned green I really love it this is Lani Vendol Stormy Blend DK in the color Walden. And this is a new base that we'll get at the shop at Strick Philippe soon. This is an Italian brand uh, run by two uh, women, Stefania and Julia. They're amazing. We met at Barcelona Knits and we've had them on our radar before going there, Mela and I. And yeah, we asked them if they wanted to maybe come and be like a brand that we sell at our shop and they were like yeah we would like that and we we're like yeah that's so cool and it was a, a whole situation i really love their shop like their um booth was maybe one of my favorite at flock fiber no at barcelona knits and yeah this a uh, half brioche half fisherman's hat is maybe one of my proudest uh, accessory moments it's a whole new technique that I learned and mastered, if I say so myself. And um, I think it suits me. I'm, I like how it fits. I like the, it's not too soft, like, but it's not scratchy at all. It has like a wool alpaca, um, it's Italian wool and alpaca mix. It's hand dyed, it's beautiful. And I'll have to hand it over to the shop for a couple of months, maybe until next uh, winter. It'll live at the shop for, a couple of months as a sample and then I, I'll get to take it home again. Um, I've actually gifted or not gifted, it's still mine, but it um, one of my sweaters I made the year before, the year prior, lives at the shop now as a sample because we're selling that yarn base and I don't wear it. It's in Loch Lomond by BC Garn. Um, it's just not my preferred colorway um, and so it lives at the shop as a sample and this is my second or third technically sample that I've made for the shop this year. 
And then last before moving on to the hollow v-neck is a self-drafted little headband with a knot. Uh, this is not really anything to talk length in length about. This is just, like I said, a headband. It's made from Camaro's Snefnuk that we also sell at the shop. It's like in a dark gray color. Um, we have a similar pattern like sample at the shop and my, my boss just told me how how it's done. It's also in brioche stitch and then you sew the knot by like holding the ends together and like kind of like a yeah you you hold it in a certain way and then you you stitch it up there's a free tutorial that is linked in my um ravelry page on how i did it and how someone else has like i said created this free pattern for it it's a bit too narrow if i do it again i would add like two or four more stitches so it actually covers the whole my whole ear and not just like leaves out my um the tip of my ear or my, my earlobe um, but yeah, it's fun if I have like my hair up, maybe going to the gym or like doing the food shop and I don't have my hair down, which my hair is so thick that I don't really get cold ears if I have it down and maybe put like a beanie on. But if I have it up, uh, cause I haven't washed it or I don't know, I don't feel like having it open. Um, I can't wear a beanie and then I, my ears get cold super easy. So that's what that was intended for. I might make some more of this actually for next year's Christmas because I thought that was a really great and quick knit to make. And I have loads left over from the Camaros. Like I needed more than half of it, but I have like at least 20 grams left of the 50 gram skein, which I might get some more and make something else with it. I'm not sure. Okay, last finished object for this video. I know it's been some time. I hope you're still enjoying this video. I hope you're still with me. I hope you're getting loads of knitting done during this video. <laughs> Is the Hollow V-neck by Kadri. I really thought I'd made more different stuff, but actually if I look at it, I had some designers in there and then loads of petite knit and then loads of Paula Strict actually. And then this one, Kadri. One Ozetta. You get it. This hollow v-neck was inspired by me trying on my friend Chelsea's how many times can I say my friend and then and like insert some of my friends that I always mention on this podcast make a drinking game out of that I mean don't but like you could but that would be pretty irresponsible because I say it so many times and you'd all be drunk by now <laughs> sorry um I tried on hers while I was visiting her her sweater number 14 which is similar in construction but actually Mandy by Knits by Mandy, who I really enjoy watching, she's made a video about comparing the two. She's made a video about making the Harlow V-neck and then in that she compared the two and described why she was choosing this one by Kadri in comparison to the one by Knitting by My Favorite Things Knitwear and I couldn't agree more with what she was saying. So that's also why I chose this. I used Similar Pura from Stash. I was already made the sweater number 18 with this yarn before. And then I used Wilbury Fiber Co. in the Berry Surrey base and Homestead, which I also got at Flock. So I used loads of my Flock yarn. Not every single skein, like I have some sock yarn left over. But like most of it I used, which I'm pretty chuffed with. I made this I think in size four. I cropped it a tiny bit so I made the ribbing maybe like two three centimeters shorter. Everything else I pretty much did to pattern except for let me maybe show you. I did the this like seaming um, detail was supposed to be a not three diamond like 3d like three dimensional um, like feature but more so like a flat feature but also feature and I've just decided to make it a three-dimensional feature by picking up the stitches in a different place in the i-cord so to like make the i-cord thicker. I hope that kind of explains what I did. What I did. At first it was a lucky um, like accident and then I just went with it because I liked the way it was looking. 
Um, and yeah, I actually needed like way less surrey than I thought I did. I only had three skeins of surrey and then like I was knitting on it and some like at one point I was looking into the pattern I was like oh shoot I think I need like a whole skein more. Actually Jess from La Mercerie texted me on Instagram she's like word has it like you need more of that we might have some in store just text us so we could send it to you um, like sell it to you I, I suppose um, and I was like oh that's so nice of you guys but I'm actually thinking like I have enough which I don't know if you've ever had that but if I'm playing a game of yarn chicken. I tend to knit even faster because I'm like, I need to see if I have enough yarn. And yeah, that's what made me knit this sweater in three weeks, which wasn't good for my wrist and arm pain, which I've been experiencing. If you look at my December list, you're like, duh, girl. That's why you're having pain because you knitted so much stuff and like 15 gifts this year. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. And that's why I'm taking a bit of a, I mean, I'm not taking a whole knitting break. I couldn't go without like completely. You you would have to make me go without. I'm not choosing to not knit, but I'm choosing to knit less this first year of uh, January and just monogamously, which also, who am I? No, but I'm like focus knitting on my last plan of last year which i that was just one thing i didn't accomplish at the end of december which is my barbara shawl i'm just finishing that and since like getting to the decreases it's going faster so okay so my top 10 favorite knits of 2023 were the judy sweater by gregoria fibers i just love the stitch pattern and the yarn combination the farnham tee by the knit pearl girl i just think it's a, a great t-shirt i wouldn't have thought that i'd be able to knit t-shirts the hermione every hermione's everyday socks by erica luder i just think it's a it's a great pattern it's free it's it's easy it's beautiful it they're just one of my favorite socks the april cardigan by petite knits Mm, love the yarn combination great fits cardigans are really versatile in my uh, wardrobe and just really cozy i would say yeah my stella quill cushion by laura penrose obviously had to make the list i just i just love it every time i look at it i'm really proud of my like what i have accomplished with knitting um and i love the colors it's super autumnal and just really fits our flat and my my style uh, a lot the swatch bag by maria scabaglade um i don't know what to say about this i think it's pretty obvious that it's <laughs> it was one of my favorite makes this year and i think it's just beautiful scrappy thrifty i don't know like creative thing to do and i love it second sock of the list would be the broken rib socks or broken rope socks better by Summerly Knits. I love it. Um, don't know what to I'll say about it. I think it's a pretty nice, pretty impactful, but still really easy pattern. And obviously, I love the egg nook. This last one was also really obvious and easy. It's the Kalini blouse by Coley Nielsen uh, or Paisley Knits. Um, I just love the stitch definition, the yarn, everything. This is the only pattern that hasn't been released by the time that I upload this video. I hope to keep you updated. If it comes out, I'll share in my Instagram stories. Uh, I think Coley has been focusing on <laughs> dyeing yarn as well as like, um, yeah, working on, on Paisley Knits. So it hasn't, so far, there's no release date set as far as I know. And uh, second to last, my Ola head by Paula Strict. I think it was pretty obvious that I really like that pattern. Um, so yeah, it had to it had to be in my top ten favorite knits this year, this last year. And then lastly, my Hollow V neck by Kadri. Uh, I just love it. Um, and yeah, I love the fit. I like how I feel in it. I, I feel so cozy. I like the colorway, which. Uh, the warm of the homestead and the cool tones of the um, the similar pure have really cancelled each other out. So it's a really nice neutral grayish beige color, which I like. 
and yeah from speaking from this i've got like no repeats which i think is really cool like all of these are from different designers uh starting at gregoria fibers over um the Knit Power Girl, Erica Luda, Petite Knit, Laura Penrose, Maria Scarbeglade, Samalee Knits, uh, Coley Nielsen, Paula Strict, and Kadri. There is no repeats. That wasn't on purpose. It just happened to be so, which I think is really cool. Um, judging from what I've knit this year, this past year, I think there was loads of Petite Knit in there, um, obviously. But still, I think the shining, like the standout, um, patterns were from so many different designers and I think that's that's amazing so I was <laughs> looking back at my last year's like what I knit in 2022 uh, video and I was lolling a bit at it <laughs> because obviously I had so many plans and they changed uh, and I would say that I realized that some of these plans were more so like a little wish list um just things that inspired me that i liked i like roundups like that but i just didn't i just wanted to create a bit more transparency in saying that these weren't realistic uh plans and that by test knitting quite a bit and by new patterns coming out all the time these um weren't accomplished <laughs> obviously i have still quite of um the yarn in my stash that i had planned and i still have some pretty exact uh, projects or project plans attached to to them which um, then some of them I use for for different patterns um, like with a festival sweater that then pretty much became a, um, a stripe hype sweater and with other uh, plans and the yarn I still have it in stash and I will I will see how it goes I will maybe talk about my how my autumn plans went in my next video and um like i said i want to show off my sweater quantity stash and what plans are attached to it since that is a different video than what i'm planning on making the next two to four months which would be another video idea so i hope you're excited for all of them i feel quite inspired right now although like i said i will have to see when time and when the stars align basically when i find the energy and time to to film but if i do and when i do i will do that one of the plans that i had in that uh, roundup was to knit my first cardigan which i did i also knitted the lento and the hitchhiker beanie which were also concrete plans in my 2022 uh, end of year roundup uh so what i put into my nose was so i basically learned that you can't knit it all but I still tried, ha ha, which I think knitting like 45 projects plus the ones that I haven't finished, like two blankets, three pairs of socks, uh, one sweater, one shawl. I really gave my best to like knit all of the patterns out there. Obviously joking, but yeah, I know it's a lot and maybe a, a goal for this year would be to knit less, not like in a Obviously, I'm I'm happy with most of them, and I think I have a very healthy outlook on like giving knits if if they don't serve my purpose anymore, like giving them away and or de stashing or frogging or like I'm I'm not gonna put myself down if I have spent time on something and don't love it anymore. That's okay, but still, yeah, no, I've I've collected loads of da data about like what I like. On my body like what i think suits me and what i like to wear and what i've been wearing and what i like to gift and these things and so yeah um <laughs> more on that later some of my highlights in 2023 were that i was able to continue making youtube videos for you guys um i was making them consistently throughout the week throughout the year um, since starting my podcast in November in 2022. So that was one of my highlights. That sounds cheesy, but it's true. I love branching out into the vlogging aspects of YouTube, um, which like I, some, I've maybe shared before where, where I actually started like 10 years ago, I did, did YouTube already. When I was an au pair in London, I filmed myself and my life there and I also did Vlogmas one year, which <laughs> it 
the the video quality is pretty bad and i'm not saying that my vlogmas now had a very like a loads better production value but uh audio and sound were a bit better than they were in 2014 15 so yeah another highlight is i built myself my own yard pegboard with my partner and it's over there and i love looking at it every day um it shows me some of my mostly like single special skeins which most of the time are sock yarn sock skeins and they just show me um some of the stuff that i want to get to this year um which i'm not trying to set some really concrete goals like finish a sock every month i don't think that's realistic for me to be honest but yeah i'm i just like looking at it and will hopefully make my way through some of them although i also feel like i will at least for some of them i will hold on to them as like a souvenir thing and eventually knit with them but i'm not a person who's trying to de-stash or stash down all of my yarn i'm very comfortable with um, a small or like moderate stash but still I want to knit from stash. That is another goal I'll talk about a bit more later. Another highlight and uh, I think my biggest highlight when it comes to knitting this last year was that I went to my first, my second and my third yarn festival and I met all of my knitting friends um, from literally all over the world and uh, <laughs> that is like it's crazy to say, it's crazy to think about. I went to Seattle to Flock Fiber Festival. I went to a tiny festival here in Germany at um, in Westerwälder Wolfest is called. It's actually where my grandma lives, like around the space where where some of my family lives. Um, it's not too far from here. And then I went to Barcelona on it. So two pretty, pretty big ones and then a, a small one. And they were all great in their own like way. Um, I mean, Flock Fiber Festival wouldn't have been the same without Chelsea, who made the experience just uh, even like a hundred times better than it already was. Like even being there was amazing, but spending that time with her, exploring the Pacific Northwest, uh, meeting Megan and um, Coley and Jess and Emily and Maya and Bridget and Ariel and um Nyla and Ali and I will forget people so I'm stopping now but meeting uh Anna <laughs> meeting everyone was just so incredible incredible just around that um <clears throat> trip and then on other trips meeting other people as well that um yeah that was one of my like if not the highlight of the year and then lastly i forgot that i i started working at a yarn shop so i pretty much took knitting to the next level and went to the source and start started working at my local yarn shop <laughs> so what i learned um so i i think i learned more about what i like to wear and um that doesn't mean that i still didn't knit some stuff that i <clears throat> now wouldn't maybe wear but it gave me some more knowledge about what a what i need from a knitted item and what i want the finished object to look like on my body and i also learned more about what i don't like on myself what i don't feel comfortable in what i don't think will be practical in my wardrobe so that is <laughs> quite a bit learning quite a big learning and i will see how and in which capacity i can take that into the new year and with test knitting and stuff like that I um, might have to say some more things about that too um, another thing that I learned is that it is okay to gift projects that you had at one point or originally uh, intended for yourself so I have cast on quite a few things that I then just didn't wear so I was struggling a bit with the idea of like gifting kind of like hand-me-downs Although then I, I realized like I didn't wear these things, like might have tried them on once or might have even worn them out once. But then like um, you can always wash them again, like block them again. And if you're gifting them, they're still the, 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 the value is still the same. It doesn't matter if you've 
had a specific person in mind if you've then like months later maybe just realized that one person would be so happy to receive that that is obviously also fine there is something to say about picking and choosing like a specific yarn and project for a person and gifting it i think that adds value if you want to like if you want to put it that way but it doesn't take value from a project if you haven't if you hadn't like intended it to give it to another person i feel like for me it is really a good way of handling my knits to let them go if they're not serving a purpose for me and gifting them uh, doesn't just because i had made them for myself uh, initially doesn't make them any less awesome um I mean, even though I, I had already started talking about that at the beginning of the first video, um, it has its obvious downsides and controversies. I um, thought that using Ravelry consistently since beginning, since the beginning of 2023, has really helped me to track my knits and keep on, on track with them. Otherwise, I don't know how I would have composed this video, to be honest. Um, so yeah, that is a learning for me too. Another thing is that I continued sock knitting in 2023 and I loved it. Um, my, I think my learning curve was like crazy. I think you can see in my first two socks of the year still. And then my last couple of socks, the learning curve I have like gone through. First of all, I, um, I found my favorite cast on technique, which is the German twisted cast on. I found uh, my favorite cuff length, which is between 15 and 20 rows. I think, I think 15 rows. I think I need about 60 rows for a leg for it to be the, the height that I want. And I'm always gonna use 2.5, 80 centimeter round needles, chow gu red lace forever. <laughs> They're my favorite needles. Um, and I always use magic loop. Um, I have knit on 2.25 because the pattern called for it and that was okay. I found them to be a bit snug though, so 2.5 I prefer. So loads of learnings. <laughs> Another thing is about test knitting and I wanted to talk to that point because I thought and I found like talking to friends about it, especially Venetia has been quite vocal about this recently too since she was another person in my like immediate um, knitting uh, online friend circle that had tested it around about the same amount that I did, I would say, and then started to like not knit, test it as much too uh, towards the end of the year is think twice about applying for a test knit. Like <clears throat> I wanna this year focus on my own plans more cause I could tell them like fizzling away like over the summer I was so engrossed in some of these test knits that I kind of lost so many weeks that I could have spent on projects that I wanted to get to there's at least like four t-shirt quantities slash projects ideas like attached to it in my stash that I could have gotten to lost some already and I didn't and that's okay. I might get to them this summer. I might get to them next summer. I might never get to them and I'll de-stash it. It's okay, but I want to focus on my own plans more. I have set myself a little rule. I'm not too big into rules, like too many strict things keep having uh, the opposite effect. Like I work better if I'm not restricting myself with anything really. That means that I have a healthy relation a more healthy relationship with these things um and that's like true for every, anything in life i try to not be too restrictive with anything because i tend to find that that works better for me um but like a a rule of thumb let's say which will help me in the future determine if i really want to test it or apply for a test it is i should only apply to that test it if i really want to make that make right now even if I think it is a gorgeous pattern, I could always wait for it to be uh, published and then knit it, like buy the pattern and knit it. Uh, I don't rely on getting the patterns for the test knits because I cannot afford to buy them otherwise. It is a nice perk, but it's also lots of work to test knit. So you would 
always have to look at it that way. It's like buying a finished pattern. Obviously, you can still find some mistakes, but you're buying and paying for like a service. It's a pattern. It's it's finished. Test knitting for someone means helping them to get it to that stage, right? So I will still be test knitting and I'm actually hoping that there is a test knit that I would looking forward to coming out soon so I can apply for it. But that is only because that is a project that I, in some shape or form, it's a cable sweater, right? So, and I really wanted to make a cable sweater for two years. So this year I'm gonna make a cable sweater. It's, that is set in stone. And so I really like the design. There's not another design that I like more out there. So I might, or I will apply for that test knit. Will I get it? It's another question and um, how am I going to take this like <laughs> throughout the rest of the year? I think Casey from Young Folk Knits has put it really uh, well recently in one of her videos. She said, you must be okay to stop all of your other projects for a while to just focus on that one thing for some weeks. And she's so like right and that's what i can see from my year and review like seeing what i've knit every month has shown me like a pretty big dip over like the summer where i did like it like back to back t-shirt test knits and then that polo shirt which like took months and months and months to make and then in the autumn time i had made two sweaters which i i really loved and i only applied to them because i really wanted that finished object and like test for these people which I admire like who I admire and then the same with the um the cushion and it took loads like it took loads of time that cushion but I wanted to have the finished object right that instance so that's okay so I think I've learned that already in the last year but I'm gonna take that learning with me and still I wanted to say I want to test it less this new year but also I want to say I learned so much through test sitting last year like I don't want to talk too badly about it because I've learned loads like about knitting construction about how knitting patterns are constructed written up um, wordings like I realized throughout the year unfortunately that I knew so little in some aspects actually like I said, I had been doing some translation work uh, with knitting patterns and I have stopped that, stopped doing that since uh, I had to realize that, unfortunately, uh, I wasn't cut out for it. Like I didn't know enough about it and that is, it's okay for me uh, now to have realized that, but still it wasn't easy. <laughs> I thought I knew more, um, but it's, it's not an easy thing to just like translate a knitting pattern. There's so much more that goes into it. So many faults that you can, yeah, so many mistakes that you can make, so many things that you can run into. And I think I was a bit naive to think that I could just do it without being trained for it. So that was another learning. Um, but for me now that is okay. And like I said, still, I've learned so much from it. So many techniques that I hadn't done before and I learned through those test nets just right when other people were learning as well. So I like that community aspect of test knitting. Another thing I had realized throughout that year is that the seasonal planning and like setting goals fit my style of knitting so much better <laughs> in my brain structure um, in comparison to like filming in January and being like, that's what I wanna knit this year. <laughs> which in some ways I had done that last year was being like, oh, I wanted this, this, this and that. I knitted some of those things, but most of them I didn't. And that's also okay. I've just realized doing like quarterly or seasonally or even monthly planning, which is what I do for me personally now. It's like I'm doing a priority thing. That is what I want to get done, like three goals, maybe one month. And then like, these would be optional if I get these done or if I want to break through like a, a breakthrough out working on those priorities I can do some of these things and then I have like a visual and I can always lean back on that and it has worked out for me quite well um, these last couple of months and that's also I think why I'm going to film another seasonal planning video soon it's I 
guess it's a bit late to film like a winter plans because I'm obviously already working on my winter plans and they've been like contiguously from autumn planning too but I want to do like a Q1 planning as looking back at how I've done with my autumn knits I think um, I've seen that in one of Amy's knee knits recent videos where she was like how did I do on my like what I had set out to do and how what did I do what did I didn't what did I didn't do <laughs> that was one too many dids what did I not get to and what do I want to do this new season the winter season so in kind of like a similar style because I really enjoyed watching that video and you should check it out if you haven't already which you probably have already um yeah um since I've just for now been focusing on these autumn knitting plans and then gift knitting a lot um, so I think it might be like contiguous autumn into winter. Um, I also realized, and I've hinted at that at the beginning of the uh, video, our first video, if I actually um, managed to cut them in half and like do two parts, you're in part two right now, I guess. <laughs> um, I realized what sweaters fit, fit which weather a, like situation better like superwash merino lighter sweaters like dk sweaters for warmer days or for days indoors where like the heating is on for example i wore my stick season on christmas great color for christmas i think but also great yarn because heating was on there were like many people around me i was warm i was maybe having a glass of wine with my dinner i was Getting, I would have gotten sweaty in like a, a thicker, maybe mohair sweater. So I was pretty happy with that. And then also thicker sweaters for colder days, which I had um, the root awakening, <laughs> uh, being dressed in one of my superwash sweaters one day and freezing at the shop uh, because the door opens quite a lot of the time and some of the customers don't realize that they could close it behind themselves. No, we have like a really uh, difficult door. It won't like it opens really easily and then it doesn't close on its own and like loads of people don't go back and like close it. Some do, really nice people do, but yeah, I was freezing those days. Like it was really cold days and I was wearing my superwash sweaters. Didn't work out. I learned that. I also learned that I generally... Rup, I generally like holding two strands of yarn together. Um, yeah, just I like the look of it. I like the marling. I like how the two um, kind of like components or qualities of the yarn kind of marl into each other as well. Like alpaca for warmth and then wool for like um, memory and like structure and something like that. <laughs> I also, another thing I did in 2023 is I learned how to spin. I actually started spindle spinning. I won't show you that because like that is, isn't is worth showing, but I'm still uh, really happy that I tried it. This summer at Flock Fiber Festival, I got myself a beginner's drop spindle and some, I think it was Cordell um, <clears throat> fiber, <clears throat> sorry, white fiber. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, being a beginner and learning how to spindle, like drop spindle, is frustrating in and of itself. And I would always um, suggest like getting a hand dyed or could be machine dyed, but like a fun, colorful braid for your first spin. So you want to get ahead, which is what I did um, on my wheel recently. And that's just so much more fun. I uh, got to try out the Woolmaker Bliss Wheel actually from my colleague and since I really like working on it my mom and my uh, partner gave it to me for Christmas. They bought it off her. Um, she was uh, looking to sell and I made my first yarn which like can you believe this? Um, this was just like a merino wool that I got at the German festival, yarn festival that I went to. And I would want to make maybe a little um, ornament for the tree again next year. Just something small, maybe some gloves. Uh, I've actually gifted some of uh, this. I've made two, um, 
two hangs and so I gave one of my I think second hang was the one that turned out better and I gave uh, some of that away to my friend who I made the advent calendar for and it was her birthday in December and I gave her one she made a crop puff sweater with that which is crazy uh, cool <laughs> and I I'm I'm holding on to my first ever skein like I'm not gonna knit with this I'm gonna knit with the second one and I've tried putting it into my blanket but it just had such a different gauge and structural yeah going for it that I just didn't want it in my blanket and then that one square looking funny like yeah I think it would have just look, looked a bit wonky in that blanket and then I also started sewing in 2023 I had sewn like by hand a couple of times as a kid and then I'd made some like little stuffies um stuff like that like I knew how to like use a sewing needle to like sew in tags for example or like sew something that had been broken stuff like that but I actually borrowed my partner's mum mum's knitting no sewing machine since she is not using it at the moment and she's like yeah you can have it for as long as you want and I and I made some scrunchies and I made some project bags and I gave them as Christmas and birthday presents again in December I'm gonna maybe I'm not sure how how I feel in editing but it should be should be nice to have some pictures to look at so yeah and I would really like to take these things into the new year so some of my goals goals like I say I'm gonna keep it light but for 2024 would be to test knit less and just for items that I'm like a hundred percent certain that I want to knit them now like I said they could be beautiful patterns. They, they could even be designers reaching out to me being like, do you want to test knit this? Would be so nice. I know that by this point now, um, if I talk about a, a project, obviously it'll have more, how would you say that? Like more exposure because of the podcast and uh, my knitting in Instagram and stuff. And I would love to like help anyone who's, work I admire with that and I try to highlight other people's work all of the time but I can't do a test knit just because I like someone <laughs> like it's just not feasible time-wise to test knit for everyone that I like because I was just be test knitting all of the time so um, I hope it makes sense the way in which I'm trying to say it I know that it is important for designers and there are so many designers that would I would hope for them to have more exposure even and like their pattern to do it even better um and if i can and if i want to i will test p uh, patterns for them but i've decided not to <coughs> have myself flattered into a test knit which i don't want it to sound too negative but yeah with the with the polo neck the designer which i who I really admire. I like her work. I will. Um, I'm. I'm looking at one of her sweaters, which has a really nice, like, very open gauge design. I'm looking at that run now. She's recently brought out a shawl. Like, she makes beautiful stuff. Crea Dia. Mm, but I think I've said yes to that chestnut because I was so flattered for a for a designer that I look up to to ask me to test it for them. That I said yes to something that eventually I didn't enjoy and then I didn't wear the finished item so like I said I don't want to be negative I've set my piece with this piece and I'm not going to talk about it again um, I'm just yeah I'm adamant to be open and honest about all of these these things and that's not to say that there's anything wrong with any of these pattern that patterns that I've made mostly these were my mistakes or situations in which I didn't yeah gauge the situation correctly and I should have made different choices and that is okay we all learn so this might sound cheesy but in 2024 I want to make more of what makes me happy and um, that goes for all of these crafts that I've just uh spoken about spinning sewing knitting and I also want to learn how to crochet 
We have an idea at the shop of how to make some of the spring decorations and my boss might show me how to do these like easy stitches because like how is it that I cannot crochet? Like I'm trying everything and I'm not doing the I'm not gonna say the most basic but like one of the base levels of like fiber crafts like a thing that so many people do. Not saying it's basic just saying it's like it's an integral part of the fiber arts community right? So why can I not crochet? No, I'm not trying to put it like that. I'm, I am I want to crochet. I want to learn. There's actually the Kelly crew neck I've got on my list. So if I can maybe do it, I want to crochet that sweater. Obviously going to start smaller with like a little, I don't know, <laughs> thing for the kitchen, like a little, I don't know. I'm going to try to crochet Maya and Emily from what, uh, what Maya made and um, Gently Chaotic Knits. They actually made this beautiful v-neck with another colleague of them from uh, La Mercerie, uh, which was crochet and that was so beautiful. And every time I saw it last year, I was like, oh, I wanna learn how to crochet just to make that. So that would be another thing. And so I wanna make what makes me happy, I said, and then I wanna learn experiment more with what suits me like I don't uh, subscribe to the idea of some things suiting some people and other things not like wear what makes you happy but obviously I want to look good in what I'm wearing like I want to I want it to to be proportionally or color choice wise be something that is in harmony with who I am and how I look like um I don't know if that makes any sense but um yeah i want to maybe step out of set outside of my comfort zone in some ways and i want to knit loads of vests and slipovers and hope they suit me because i don't know mm, i think some might some don't like i can't make them too fitting i don't think but like oversized vests i'm all for it and they're um, they're going to be in my making wish list for 2024 and then I want to continue knitting from stash. Um, I will film a video about this soon. Like I said, maybe my stash uh, qu sweater quantities from stash and the projects I have attached to them in mind, they sometimes change because my I might realize I have a bit too little or not too much, but too little yarn for something and then or another pattern comes up. But if they change drastically and I don't love the yarn anymore, I can always de-stash it. Um, I want to use what I have basically. I'm not saying I'm on a yarn ban. I don't, like I said, subscribe to the idea of um, setting up really hard rules in a in an area of my life that is purely joy. Um, if I earn money, I can, and I don't have any other huge responsibilities to use it for, um, I might use it to buy yarn, <laughs> but um, I have so much yarn that makes me happy when I think about it or look at it. So I want to I wanna use it. I hope that makes sense. I've been doing that uh, this last year. I've knit a lot from stash, but I want to knit more from stash. Unfortunately, I had to cut the video here since my video editing software wouldn't cooperate. So there's going to be a part three.